make you think that the passing game is close to clicking? Yeah, and and just talking in reference to the running game, you know, we we got lucky a little bit in the first half because, uh, uh, as I told you, there was going to be a lot of different fronts, a lot of moving parts, and uh, didn't block things as well as we wanted to in the first half, and. Um, settled in the second half, Paris, uh, you know, was running like we expect Paris to run. He found a couple of things. And, you know, in the passing game, I think we, we just need, uh, with this group, we need that early play, that early spark. Uh, and I think uh, you look at that first drive uh, just off the fingertips of KT on that first down uh, call there. Uh, we completed a good, I mean, that's, and, and the, the frustrating thing is that third and seven, uh, right hash, you know that throw that Brennan makes. I mean, it's that, that's a that's a big time throw, and so so. But we're not making those consistently, uh, and I think it's starting to come together. It is a transition. It's a change. You know, we're we're uh, we're challenging Brennan, uh, Brennan to throw on rhythm, which is a little bit different than what he's used to. He's used to kind of sitting back there and uh, being able to let things unfold. And uh, some of the things we're asking him to do is to is to throw on rhythm. Um, we're asking the guys to to read coverage and and be able to make some adjustments and. Uh, with that, it takes a little bit of time uh, and chemistry and cohesion, but we're not we're not far. Uh, we just need to, to to find a way to to hit that big one. We hit that touch if we hit that touchdown uh, throw in that first drive uh, to uh, to KT, uh, we're just a little bit high. And again, Brennan's trying to get it over the defender, and um, so we're not we're not far off. The guys just got to continue to work, continue to, to continue to believe, uh, continue to have confidence in uh, the direction that we're going. And, um, and I think in the meantime, run game uh, complements that. And uh, as the offensive line continues to gain experience with the play action pass and the things that come off the run game, um, and you know, give Syracuse credit, man, they're going to challenge you with all the different movement. And um, and we and we struggled a little bit, to be honest with you, up front. Uh, Syracuse is not overly large, but they're quick, uh, and the quickness kind of kind of got to us a little bit early on, and the guys settled in and were able to pass off some of that movement. With the forecast for this weekend, do you have to have a couple of different game plans based on whatever the weather is? Right. So, so in my experience, what, what, what I'm used to and, and where we've started is we'll put together a plan based off of what we've seen on tape. Okay. Uh, that, that's where we'll start. And then within that plan, we'll have variations of things that we can do uh, that give us an opportunity to attack the structure. And then as you get closer to the week, uh, what the forecast really unfolds. I think about back to the Notre Dame game we played, uh, and, it, and it was a torrential downpour. And, you know, we had our plan, and then on game day, you know, we made some adjustments just in terms of, of thought process on, on passing game. Uh, but the run game will be installed, uh, and then our RPOs off of the run game will have to be there. And depending upon, you know, how, uh, how wet it is and the conditions of the ball. And then we've been practicing. We started practicing with a wet ball today, uh, making sure that the guys get used to, uh, catching the ball, and, and then the receivers got to be comfortable with uh, taking the shields off to make sure that they can see and uh, being prepared with when their gloves get wet to being able to take the gloves off and uh, and catch the ball. Um, but we'll have a plan uh, for, for all different uh, uh, weather conditions, whether it's no rain, whether it's, I mean, kind of like I, we were talking about the NC State Notre Dame game where it's a monsoon. And, and I think back to 03, you know, not 03, it was 01, we played Georgia Tech. Uh, at Clemson, my uh, that would have been my that would have been my junior year. Uh, no, it was 02, and we played. I mean, it was the same thing. Hurricane was coming through. It was a downpour, and I mean, you had to take all the gloves off and 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 be prepared to to catch the ball with your body if you have to. So, uh, we're preparing, uh, and we'll have a plan, uh, and it'll be adjusted once we actually see what the conditions are. We get there, but we're preparing. Couple on this topic, but Nick Jackson first his ejection. Yeah. I talked to him today. He said textbook when he watched it on film because his head was down. Yeah. Uh, what did you see on that play, and, and what are you kind of coaching him from that to, to learn from? I guess. No, that's that's a tough one because the quarterback's going down. Uh, I think if the quarterback's not going down, it's probably not going to be as big of an issue. But the quarterback's positioning and where he was sliding down. I mean, that's a that's a football play. You just have to tell him uh, as we always tell him, man, keep your eyes up. You know, I think if he keeps his head up and he doesn't duck the crown of the head, I think they'll let him hit face mask to face mask. You know, they've kind of backed off a little bit on the targeting rules that if you're not, you know, ducking your head that, you know, they're going to let you play football. So you really just, you know, tell him play football, try to be as smart as possible. Uh, but again, in the heat of the moment, you know, that's a guy trying to make a football play. Uh, I'm not going to say much other than, hey, keep your face up and uh, see what you're hitting. And if you see what you're hitting, then you got a good chance to, to not be in a targeting situation. 
Sean Perry is listed as uh, the starter in his place. Uh, I know he's played outside, he's played yeah. inside. Um, what do you like about him in that spot, football-wise? And then who kind of takes on Nick's – there's a leadership role, too, that right. maybe missing. Well, you know, Nick's going to continue to lead, uh, as I've said uh, before and, and still to this point. I mean, he's the leader of the football team. I mean, he leads uh, everybody just with the, with the way he approaches his business. His voice is really starting really starting to assert his voice uh, within the team. So he'll still lead. Uh, Ahern uh, as well, you know, he has to step up his, his leadership role. And Perry in particular, what you love about Perry is, uh, one, he's, he's physical, he's strong, he's a violent guy. Uh, he's, he's twitchy. He's one of the more twitchy guys that we have on the team. Um, still a little bit inexperienced at the uh, at the backer position, but we felt like coming into the season, the best thing for him uh, in his future and the football team was for him to move to uh, the linebacker spot as opposed to a opposed to an edge rusher. But last week we had to put him back as an edge rusher just because of because of depth. So what you like is just the athleticism, the ability to go sideline to sideline. You're playing a, a team that's going to spread you out, that has uh, skill guys that can run. Uh, you got to have a backer in there that can defend the pass, but then also can defend the run. So uh, that's where we'll start, and, and um, it's going to be him, Hunter, uh, Ahern, James Jackson. They all got to be ready to go. Uh, and then once uh, we're able to turn Nick loose in the second half, um, you know, we're excited about getting him back uh, for the second half of that game. You must be really proud of Coach Rudd and his staff, uh, the numbers they're putting up on that side of the ball. What attracted to you? Uh, that attracted him to you when you were shopping for a coordinator? Yeah, so uh, just uh, really was, was kind of word of mouth. And, and two of the guys that, that I knew, um, you know, right out the gate that I was going to try and go get because of relationship was, was Downing, that was at Navy, and then uh, Keith, that was at Army. And they'd all played each other. And just in talking to them and, and trying to get a feel for, for who were the guys that they knew of, you know, they immediately said, man, the guy at Air Force does a really, really good job. And, you know, he was kind of not looking other than, you know, he put a filler out saying that Virginia would be the type of job that he would leave for. So it was one of those situations like it kind of just uh, all fell into place, uh, to be honest with you. And then we flew out to uh, San Antonio for the coaches convention and sat down with him and brought the, all the guys that I planned on putting on defense just so they can meet each other. Uh, and it, it was uh, they, they quickly uh, said, yes, this is the guy. Just his knowledge of the of the game, his demeanor. Um, he's a he's a, a guy that wants to do it right, do it by the book. Uh, but man, once he gets on the field, I mean, he's aggressive. Like when you talk to him, you know, you're gonna kind of look at him like, man, this Air Force guy. But now you come watch him at practice. Now he's he's running around. And let me tell you something. On game day, you better not go and get a high five because he's gonna tear your arm off. I mean, he's a, he's an intense guy. Uh, so he's he's what you want in a defensive coordinator. Uh, just in terms of his tenacity, uh, his understanding, uh, and the guys have really, and that's, that's, you know, kind of the point I'm making to the guys, you know, offensively is, you know, he's been able to galvanize that staff and then get those guys to believe. Now, he was working with a group that didn't have any confidence, you know, coming in, and so they wanted, they immediately wanted something to believe in, uh, and he was able to give them that, but just proud of, of how hard those guys are playing. And, and again, for me, when I evaluate the game, I know everybody else looks at stats, I look at positioning. And pretty much the guys are in position, which tells me that, you know, they're bought into the scheme. They're understanding what we're asking them to do. We're not overloading them too much. Uh, but we still got some technical things, you know, especially in, in man coverage that we got to clean up. But uh, for the most part, those guys are, are where they're supposed to be most of the time. And uh, on the flip side, KT is uh, off to a great start. Is there a temptation when a guy's having that kind of a, a year to try to get him as many touches as possible? You know, and, and, and so... You know, where, where, where we started offensively is, is letting Dez, you know, do his, do his deal. Because I know what it's like to be an offensive coordinator and, and have, you know, somebody kind of, you know, over your shoulder. Um, and so that's where we started. And, and, and now as we're progressing, we're seeing that they got to back off just a little bit uh, because it is, I didn't realize and I don't think the staff realized how drastic, drastic of a transition it was, you know, from the system. And, you know, Coach and I and those guys do a great job, but they do their system different than what we're used to. So there's a lot of things that we're having to teach that we have to, you know, we have to back off and, and, and go as they can absorb it. And so now, you know, what you're seeing is, okay, hey, let's just, you know, get the ball in the hands of the guys, you know, and let them go make a play. As we progress and build and install, 
you know, what it is we want to have uh, for the for the future. But, you know, KT, he's just a football player. You know, he's a football player. He's a former quarterback. He's got a savvy, you know, I, and, I, and he knows because I get on all the time. It doesn't look pretty, you know, all the time, but it's effective. Like, I don't know how I tell him. I call him the old man. He's my old man right there. I tell him, I don't know how them old man moves are working, but you make guys miss. So, hey, we're going to keep trying to get you the ball, uh, get you the ball in space. But uh, he and, you know, uh, hopefully that'll that'll in, inspire and encourage those other guys to to keep working because, hey, and it's just like in the in the running back room, man, we're going to feed the hot hand. Right. So whoever's got the hot hands going to get going to get fed. And right now, uh, KT is the guy uh, in that receiver room. And we're trying to challenge, you know, Lavelle and, and, and Wicks to, you know, come alongside him uh, because they're they're man, they're extremely talented. Uh, but it's just been it's just been a process getting those guys uh, and everybody on the same page. And they're working and, and they care. They want to. Um, it's just, you know, offensively, it's 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 all 11 poetry in motion on the same page. And, and right now it's like we're each play where one guy away, you know, so you got 10 guys doing it and then you got one guy up front. OK, he's off. OK, then all five guys up front are on the same page. The throw is just a little bit off. Uh, and those are just things you got to work through. Those are growing pains as we uh, as we transition. Uh, just two quick questions on the secondary. First yeah. off, um, Antonio Clary, um, he didn't play, but right. he did travel. And then Cohen King is not listed on depth chart. This yeah. Week. So so Antonio, we were hoping uh, with the stinger issue that he was going to have enough strength and be back to where he was cleared. And it was going to be a game day decision. And uh, uh, so so we traveled him uh, anticipating that we may get positive news. And doctors just said it's not where it needs to be. But the reports are. Uh, to this morning, actually yesterday uh, in our staff meeting, is that we anticipate that he'll be at full strength. So we had a follow-up appointment today, haven't heard the results, but we're anticipating that he's going to be ready to go. And just with the, uh, with the knee and Cohen, um, you're limited to 80 guys on the travel roster, and it was a situation where there was no, there was no way he was going to play. He hasn't been able to practice yet. He's been in a yellow jersey working out on the side. So we're hoping it's nothing major, uh, just, a, just a, you know, a sprain to the MCL. And that's one of those deals that depends upon the guy. That could be a two-week. That could be a four-week. It just depends upon, you know, how quickly those guys can heal and what their pain tolerance is. So I anticipate that Cohen, uh, Cohen will be out again this week. So when you look at the young guys then, you know, Jonas Sanker and Lex Long, how happy are you of their improvement, their development stepping up? And each week they're getting better. And today, happy birthday to Lex. You know, give a shout-out to Lex. Today's his birthday. Uh, so we sang happy birthday uh, in the team meeting to him. He enjoyed that. Since he's our resident singer, I figure it was only right for us to sing to him. He enjoyed that. But he's getting better every single week, and you're seeing his confidence grow. And what you're seeing with him is, you know, he's able to play more aggressive and more violent because the game is starting to slow down to him. He's starting to understand and process so that he's not thinking so much after the snap. Still has to improve, you know, from a, from a man coverage standpoint, and, and he knows that. And, uh, that's what he's working on, uh, but just his his voice on the back end, being able to make the adjustments because he's got a hard job. Him and Jonas got a hard job on that back end with what Rudd does. You know they got to make a lot of the adjustments, and you know Jonas is progressing as well. Um, he's a guy that that I think in the future you're going to see him around the football. You know a lot more. He's got uh, he's got a nose for the football, but he's got to continue to progress. And the game hasn't slowed down quite as much for him. Um, as uh, as uh, as it has for Lex, but man, I'm pleased with uh, with him. And he was a guy that we didn't have this spring. You know, he was coming off of a shoulder. Uh, he's uh, he's very athletic. Uh, he's got great ball skills. Uh, he doesn't mind throwing his body around. Now it's just uh, being comfortable in all the different checks and adjustments uh, from the motions and formation shifts and all that kind of stuff. But uh, definitely uh, proud of how those guys have progressed, and and we need them. And they've stepped up uh, when their number's been called. You brought in a punter who did not kick in a game at all last year, <laughs> did not get here until the summer. Who on the staff convinced you that taking Daniel was a good idea? Keith, right. Drew, it was, and what have you thought of Daniel's you know, kicking yeah. so far? So he's got a nickname. We call him Sparky. So obviously if you got a nickname already, you're doing pretty good. But uh, Drew Meyer uh, is kind of kind of led that charge through through the kicking channels. You know, he's tied into all of the all of the guys and uh and he was one of about three. And, uh, and then uh, Daniel came up and his mom sat down with them and, and had an opportunity to have a good conversation and meet the family, see where he was coming from. Um, and just we felt like he was the best fit. Uh, knew there was some ability there. Uh, it just needed to be developed. And, and so far, man, he's, he's been a weapon. You know, he's been a weapon for us. He's, uh, he's kicking the ball well. 
Uh, we got to continue to now. He's got to improve on some of the locations with the ball, uh, but but for the most part, he's doing a good job. Which you know, and and trying to get these guys to understand that sometimes you got to play field position to win the game, right? And we got a weapon as a punter, so we need to do a great job of protecting. And we're going to be challenged this week because uh, this uh, their, their special teams coordinator now he's going to come after it, and he's had some success blocking kicks, and he understands, you know, he understands schematically where to put some stress. And so so today was a good uh, good day for us because we worked punt on a on Tuesdays for us to uh, make sure we're protected so that we can get the ball off. Mm -hmm. You said that it came down to the Virginia job and the Duke job uh, this off season. What were things that when you were researching the Duke job that maybe thought maybe you maybe made you think that they could be successful right. immediately in, in a coaching transition off to a three and one start now? Right. So, you know, when you when you look at both uh, institutions, from my perspective, when I was evaluating uh, transitioning is I wanted high academics and both of them have uh, high academics um, I wanted an opportunity to have alignment from the president AD down to the head coach and you look at Carla you look at Nina and uh, and then you look at how they're structured it was it was very similar an opportunity to build right so you got an opportunity to build uh, both programs the way that you are uh, the way that you want and uh, and then ultimately uh, when it came down to you the deciding factor was you, you look at um, kind of history as an indicator. There was there was more history and, and tradition here, uh, so to speak. But not to say that Duke hasn't had. You know, when Coach Burry was there, they had they had success, right? So so you knew it had been done before. It can be done again. Um, and and really, you know, uh, Coach Elko was a guy uh, even before uh, this past year, a guy that I was going to target uh, as a uh, as a defensive coordinator, just because of the tremendous amount of respect that I had for him competing against him while he was at uh, Wake Forest and then at Texas A&M. Uh, had a chance to compete and then just seeing him around, uh, you know that he's first a quality quality human being, just a great guy and a uh, good family guy and kind of came up the hard way, uh, real blue collar. Uh, so I think he, uh, he understands you know, what it takes. He's been to the highest level. He was at Texas A&M, he's at Wake Forest, he's done well. Um, so, so I think that, that everything existed at both places uh, and then when it just came down to it, um, when I when I prayed about it and I thought about it, I said, okay, you know what? If I'm gonna make the decision, you know, I'm gonna take myself out of it and what's what's best for the staff. And so when I looked at it, if 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 I'm going to build something, an opportunity, uh, I just felt like there were more things in place right now here uh, to be successful uh, in the short term. Uh, but uh, but I, I had tons of respect for for uh, for all the folks over there. Their first class. Uh, I'm excited to see uh, Coach Elko. As a matter of fact, we were in uh, New York together. Our families, was it New York? Yeah, it was New York. We went to go see the Yankees. Uh, our families were all up there together with the Pinstripe Bowl affiliation watching the Yankees this summer. So uh, I'm excited to see him, excited for his opportunity because he's one of the good guys uh, in, the, uh, in the coaching profession. You mentioned Brennan earlier just kind of, you know, maybe having to his, his footwork a lot this season. You've talked about that. What do you think – you know other teams how they're defending you in the passing game now because he talked maybe you know they don't respect it as much as maybe they right. did going into the season have you seen differences in how they defend y'all well we we got a little bit more cover too um you know in in saying okay we're going to we're going to give you the run right and see if you'll be patient enough to run the football we'll play you a little bit more cover too uh and then make you have to have to throw uh in uh, in specific zones down the field and then right now we, we just hadn't we hadn't really connected on the deep balls. And so so right now what they're saying is, OK, if that's the case, probably going to try and get the quarterback in rhythm. So we're going to sit on the short throws, break on those, and then we're going to make you prove to us that you can throw the ball uh, down the field. And I think that it's a combination of a couple of things. You know, we got to do a better job at receiver of, of winning on routes, running to win, stacking defenders and giving the quarterback more room for air. Right now we're not giving the quarterback really any room for error because we're, we're, we're taking the air out of it by pressing the sideline a little bit too much as opposed to working back to about five yards from the sideline, holding your line, and then giving the quarterback the ability to throw it over the top, fade you, and then running to win. And if you get on top, you know, throwing the back shoulder. And so just some, some technical things that we got to continue to work on. But I think what they're saying is, okay, will you be patient enough, right, to, to be able to nickel and dime down the field Right. And, and I'll say this in, in just being transparent, probably a little more aggressive. Uh, there were a couple of calls in the game that I thought, well, might have been a little bit too aggressive. Uh, I understand. I've been in that position when you're trying to get something going for your guys and you're trying to manufacture the play. You're going to be aggressive. But now, you know, 2020 hindsight, you got you got 2020 vision. 
uh, probably was a little bit aggressive on a couple of calls. We learned uh, as a staff uh, from that. We'll, we'll get better, uh, trying to show some confidence in the kids, and, and that's where we came up a little bit short. But uh, I think what you're seeing is, is right now because the timing's not there, the rhythm's not there, right? People can sit on routes a little bit more. They're willing to take a chance um, because they feel like, uh, you know, we can't connect on the deep ball right now, and we just got to keep throwing them. I've been there before. You know, I'm trying to think of what maybe was it 20, 2018, early on, you know, we couldn't hit the deep ball, couldn't hit the deep ball. We were off, and you just got to keep throwing them. And over time, I think once it, all it takes is a little bit of confidence, you hit one or two of those, then everybody's confidence is going to be up, and then that's going to open up some of the other things. Mm -hmm. Coach, the, the move to Justice at center, um, why? What did you yeah. get out of it, and, and what's the plan going forward? Yeah, you know, uh, man, I love, I love Ty Furnish, you know, and, 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 and what you're seeing is just a young guy right that's trying to trying to figure it out he's trying he's has to learn on the go and so the reason why is because you know the odd front right the odd front and and what we've uh, you know what we've noticed is you know for ty right that's probably not the best thing for him when he's got a 300 pounder sitting on his nose you know right away and so what, what you saw is that man he gave us everything that he had but uh, as I said before, abandon the technique a little bit. And in that case right there at center, you cannot abandon your technique. So, you know, we're not throwing the baby out with the bathwater, right? You know, but justice with the bigger body gives us a little bit a uh, little bit better chance when we're playing those uh, playing those odd fronts. And, you know, right now, Justice is kind of like the other guys. He had the hot hand, still got the hot hand. We're going to go with him, but we're going to need Ty Furnish, you know, down uh, down the road. And, and there's a reason why he was a starter coming out of, of fall camp, because he, he proved it on the practice field. We just got to get him to a point to where in the game, in the game, and he transitions all the time because he's very, very capable, right? He's very, very capable. All those guys up front are very, very capable. We just got to, man, when the bullets start flying, right, just stay together, right? Don't, don't, don't abandon the, the training, right? And so what you're seeing a little bit uh, with, with in particular the guys on offense is, man, they've had success, right? And I'm not downplaying that in, in any way. They've had success, and they built muscle memory to that success, right? So when they get into a situation, right, it's easy to try and revert back to that. The problem is, is that's not what we're doing. You know what I'm saying? And so, so you, you, have, you have lapses in the game where, man, you just revert. Like you watch, you watch Leach. Uh, man, Leach is doing great. Two plays, bam, good technique. He's kick setting, kick setting, you know, on his slide. The next thing you know, he's backpedaling, right? And then the moment he starts backpedaling, that's when he gets beat. Uh, so just getting those guys to, man, trust, you know, rep after rep. Um, and it starts in practice, you know, trust and rep after rep, man. And, and, uh, and they want to believe. There's no question about that. But it's just taking them some time to transition and, and uh, eliminate, you know, kind of some of the muscle memory that they've had from the past. Two more personnel things. Mm -hmm. uh, update on, on Billy Kemp. Yeah, Billy's back. He's back this week. And, you know, it was, it was a situation. And it was, it was probably more so my call last week than anything. Uh, he had went to the doctor on Wednesday and was cleared. But he hadn't practiced in, in, in a week and a half. You know, hadn't played. You're talking about a kidney issue. You know, with uh, with a reaction to some uh, uh, to some sickness that he had before, and I just didn't want to put him in a situation where he takes a shot on that kidney, and and we don't know. So so he got cleared on Wednesday, Thursday ish, and I just decided with with us traveling, um, let him you know take the rest of the weekend to rest, make sure we're fully in the clear uh, with the kidney. Uh, but he's back flying around. Um, excited to get him back going. And then you obviously, change pickers. Yep. So, so the plan, the plan going forward is, man, I'm gonna give uh, Betcher's a shot, uh, give him a shot to to see see what he can do out there, and uh, let him go into the week knowing that he's gonna be the guy that's gonna handle uh, the field goal duties, and then uh, just let Farrell focus on uh, on kickoffs, but also be ready uh, in case we have to make a make a change back. But you know, the biggest thing is is on the two that we missed. Yeah, good snap, good hold, good protection. Man, we just we just miss hit it, and we've had a couple where we where we've miss hit, and it and you gotta have points. You know, you gotta have points when you go out there, and and I know he's trying, and but he's got to work through it. But right now, uh, with uh, with Will, you know, that's what we brought him in here to do. I got to give him a shot to see can uh, see can he be a little bit more consistent for us. You touched on Coach Rudd earlier, but how much do you think the difference maybe is the scheme or verse or maybe just the personnel that you all have this year on defense? Um, you know, I don't, I'm not going to get into scheme because uh, uh, at the end of the day, like I'm telling the guys, 
Man, it doesn't matter about the plays, man. It's about the it's about the Jimmys and the Joes, not the X's and the O's. And so what you're seeing is one, the competition on the edges, right? Has made Chico. Like Chico's been back to back nominated for player of the week, uh, within house for us. And so he's playing at a high level. You know, his confidence his confidence is up. And then you see uh with the addition of, of uh of Devontae inside, you know, it's pushed those guys to, to get better. Then you got the, the progression of Ben Smiley, you know, and then Nick another year of, of just confidence and then on the back end. So there are schematically, you know, things that they're doing very well because, again, the guys are not out of position. But what, what, what I think is making the difference is, man, those guys, I mean, they're playing hard. I mean, they're pushing each other. Um, they, they have a lot of confidence, you know, in their unit. Right, they've, they've chosen to say, you know what, we're not going to be defined what happened to us last year. This is a brand new year. Uh, we're, going to, we're going to create our own, our own future, and, and that's what you're seeing. So I think it's a combination of the, the scheme being sound, him putting them in the right positions, the guys understanding that. But at the end of the day, man, guys just being sold out to go out and, and play hard and make plays uh, and find a way and believing. And then what you're seeing, too, is – you know, they're, they're, they're trying to, to push everybody, special teams and offensively, you know, challenge those guys to, to compens- not compensate but complement, you know, what, what, uh, what they're doing on defense. While we've had a couple of secondary questions today, Fincharles Cypress seems to be playing pretty well. What, what have you seen through four games with him? Yep, so, you know, first game he was defensive player of the game uh, for us, and, uh, and probably nobody would have expected that because he's such a – mild-mannered, quiet guy, like you don't even notice him. Like I'll walk through the locker room, I'll say, what's up, Sype? And like I have to say it again because I don't hear him say, what's up, coach? Uh, he's just really, really quiet, keeps to himself. He's the same every single day. Uh, but what you're seeing is he's becoming a little bit more confident, you know, in his game. Um, and was challenged too because he had a good game the first game. Second game kind of was, was solid, right? I really challenged him and AJ because I wanted him to be more physical. Uh, as tacklers, especially when you're crack replacing. I want them to come up, set the edge, get guys on the ground. Uh, he's really taken, uh, taken heed to that. Uh, almost had an interception uh, in the Syracuse game, uh, went down for a ball. So, so what you're seeing is that he's just continuing to gain confidence, you know, week after week after week. Um, and we're going to need that, and especially at corner too. And that's why I got to get some of these young guys to, to step up. I'm really challenging uh, Baker. Right, he's going to be one of our team captains that go out for the coin toss. Man, really challenging him because when he's gone in so far, he's given us quality snaps. Right, but he's a guy that's got to that's got to help us. But Fentrell's just been solid. You know, he's he's there every single day. Shows up, same person, goes to work, no issues. You don't hear him. You don't have to call him out, uh, which is a, which is a positive thing. Your defense is ranked first in the country right now in fumble recoveries. How important has that been for just the overall performance? And it's huge because offensively we're like 117th in, uh, in turnovers, right? And we're not scoring any points off of the turnovers. That's the, that's the worst part, right, is the defense is creating turnovers for us. And then offensively we're just not, we're not cashing in uh, like we should. But uh, uh, it's all about the ball, and that's what, that's what we tell them. Offensively, the objective is to take care of the ball, put it in the end zone. Defensively is – don't let it cross the goal line. Take it away. And those guys have, have taken pride in both and really proud of, of those guys because you look at it, they had five trips to the red zone last week and they came up with one touchdown. And truth be told, you know, that was tough on defense when the kickoff, kickoff team gives up a, a big return in the plus territory, right? But other than that, man, they've taken pride in, in, in not allowing them across the goal line. And, man, they're trying to get that. They're trying to get that ball out. So we need them to continue, right? And then offensively, we've got to stop turning it over. You know, and, and um, I don't think the guys just want to turn it over, but they got to trust the fundamentals of carrying the football, you know, the way that we carry the uh, – talk to them about carrying the football and then understanding, like, what are your problems. So you look at Brennan's fumble in the game, right, and a lot of people don't consider this, but a lot of times what happens is offensive guys see their own color, they relax, right, and then they run into their own color, and then next thing you know, the ball's on the ground. That's kind of what happened, right? He was in a crowd of his own color. He relaxed with the football, okay, thinking, oh, it's my own color, and boom. Now he wasn't anticipating contact. Here comes the contact, ball comes out. And then the, the interception, man, he just got to throw that away. You know, being, being aggressive, probably could have ran the ball. They might have been expecting it. They're going to drop back. Tight ends hung up. You see him hung up, just throw it out of bounds. 
go on to go on the second down. We can't throw that ball up just for grabs right there. So, but we got to do a better job offensively. But but I'm I'm challenging the defense to continue to create those turnovers. Uh, and if we can do that uh, and get it fixed offensively, then you know we have a chance to to be you know what I believe we're capable of being as a team. Take our last question from Mike. We're still kind of getting to know you, your personality. Right. Are you a bulletin board material guy, and are you worried at all that the fact that you've said publicly, hey, I took the Virginia job over Duke, is going to play to their kids? I mean, the thought that if I'm in that locker room, I'm thinking that guy didn't want to coach me. He wanted to coach the guys we're playing. Uh, any concern that, that that's you know I'm not I'm not a bulletin board guy I'm not a stat guy you know I don't I don't pay attention to to those things and uh, never try like I said never trying to be uh, disrespectful to anybody I mean it was we, we, if you know me and you're close to me you understand how torn I was between you know the two institutions and in making uh, making the decision um, so I mean if that's what they want to use uh, I mean I, I understand that but. Uh, would never uh, be be disrespectful to another to another pro. Just transparent, you know, because people ask the question, and, and I just want to be transparent. And um, and then also too, uh, hopefully you look at well, man, the guy really did consider, you know, did consider do that could be the perspective that you uh, that you look at because there were a lot of people that didn't think that I actually was considering Duke, and I really really was uh, considering uh, going to uh, going to Duke, and then Virginia came in and, and kind of gave me. You know something else to think about, and that's 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 how it transpired. But if they want to use that, man, so be it. At the end of the day, right? At the end of the day, we got to spot the ball, and you know that to me, you know, and that's what I got to get this team to to understand is it's a game of emotion, but you got to be careful being emotional, right? You got to play with passion, you got to play with pride, you got to play with intensity, right? But your single motivation can't be you know something emotional right you got to play from an internal emotion that comes from a joy of playing the game and that's what i'm trying to get these guys to access because then you can access it every single game and not just when you have a uh, bulletin board material because not everybody's going to give you bulletin board material so uh hopefully people will hear this and 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 realize that man it's, i'm not taking any shots uh, at anybody uh there was really really serious consideration very very grateful uh to nina and uh uh, her belief in me, uh, but just at the end of the day, uh, there were some there were some deciding factors that went all the way down to the wire uh, that led me to to the decision that I had to make. And I wish them no, you know nothing but the best. Uh, like I said, a big fan of Coach Elko. Um, I want to see them be successful, except for one game a year, and that's when we play.